Well, the vernal equinox is here, and the air is full of clean-up, paint-up, dress-up, Easter parade enthusiasm. So, in the spirit of general refurbishing, our hero is getting his spring haircut. And here, waiting his turn in the wistful vista Tom Sawyer parlors, we find Silver Goldilocks McGee. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you're next, sir. Okay, bye. Give me a haircut. Yes, sir. Shall I go right ahead, or do you want an estimate first? <laughs> well, I did get it, let it get a little long at that. I guess my hair goes fast because I got such a fertile brain. <laughs> <laughs> you're a new barber here, ain't you? Yes, sir. I used to have a shop in the South Sea. That's why you see. Oh, a beef corner. No, just a Hawaiian clipper. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, your hair is getting a little thin on top, isn't it? Oh, it ain't never no such a thing. There ain't a man in my whole family that ever went bald. Lemon service, anything to drink, Frank? Oh, yes. Uh, two dozen towels, six aprons, ten bars of soap, and another carton of bear's street dressing. Yeah, how are you fixed for conversation? No, no, I guess not today. I still got 18 minutes of the European situation, seven minutes of who will win the pennant, and four minutes of Will Roosevelt run for a third term. How about five or six minutes of the weather ain't what it was when you were a kid? <laughs> no. No, thanks. No, not today. Okay. Hey, what is it? Six minutes of who will win the pennant and weather and all stuff like that there. We barbers subscribe to a conversation service. Every day they supply us with 15 to 20 minutes of monologue and a few jokes. Enough to last one head cut and shave. <laughs> oh, still you. Yeah, I will. <laughs> Take plenty off the top, bud. What do you mean, plenty off the top? I'm just a barber, not a magician. You had plenty off the top when you came in here. Well, you, 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 you mean you really think I'm losing my hair? Why, Chuck, I ain't a... Hold it, Frank! How long do I have to wait for a shampoo? I got a heavy drink tonight and I want to smell good. <laughs> hold it, hold what you doing? Getting a fitting for a toupee? <laughs> no, I ain't. I'm getting a little tired of being told I'm getting bald. Hey! I says, no, I ain't getting measured for a toupee. I don't need one. And even if I did, this is no climate for a convertible top. <laughs> That's pretty good, Johnny. But that ain't the way I heard it. <laughs> One fellow says to the other fellow, please, sir, I'm getting fed up on this war talk. I've heard nothing but Europe, Europe, Europe all through my. Well, says fellow, fellow, you're lucky you live over here. You don't have to hear them march, march, march all through Europe. <laughs> And if you hear bells ringing tonight, it ain't the curfew. That's me, tipping the gong around. <laughs> there, bud, goes a gentleman of the old school. He's still a sophomore. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. <laughs> About through with this hat, cut, bud? Yes, sir, all through. Now, how's it look, sir? Hey, you took a little too much off in front there. Why, I didn't touch the front. There wasn't any hair there. What? You... you... Hey, sit aside. You really think I'm getting bald? Well, I wouldn't say you were getting bald exactly, but I bet your comb and brush lay there on the dresser and wonder how they can get on relief. <laughs> uh, that'll be uh, 90 cents, please. What? 90 cents for a haircut? Yes, sir. 75 for the haircut and 15 for the tip. Thank you. <laughs> 90 cents. That guy's running a long kind of a clip joint. I wonder if I am losing my hair. Hello there, Pepper. What are you looking so worried about? Oh, the barber just told me I was getting bald, Bill. You think I am, Bill? Well, frankly, I do, Pepper. I was telling Don Novus yesterday that your face looks a lot lower than it used to. <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh, how about you? <laughs> that shiny dome of yours that aroused an awful maternal feeling in an ostrich. <laughs> You really think my hair is getting thin, eh, Billy? Gee, I hope I don't get as bald as you. Oh, it doesn't bother me, Pepper. It's a sign of mental activity. 
There's no grass on a racetrack, you know. <laughs> Your scout certainly got the run around, didn't it? Now, go ahead, Billy. Folks, down and over singing, I kiss your hand to my dad. Don, that was simply mine. It was good. You must get tired of hearing me say that week after week. Must I? Well, no, you don't have to. <laughs> By the way, Don, take a look at my hair. All right. You see anything to give you a shot? I certainly do. Huh? You got a haircut. <laughs> you think I'm beginning to lose my hair? Well, I was just talking to Billy about that, and I said that people with wavy hair weren't so apt to get bald. And what did he say? He said your hair was waving all right, waving goodbye. <laughs> well, see you later, Baldy. <laughs> Baldy, if I can't get a little decent respect around here, I... Oh, hey, buddy. Buddy, are you still on the jeans? <laughs> you bet you, bud. Where'd you get all the horses? I just drove them in from Washington, D.C. Your congressman sent them to you. Hey, wait a minute. There's some mistake. Why is my congressman sending me a herd of horses? He said you wrote him a letter and asked him to send you as a bunch of thieves. I didn't say thieves. I said thieves. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll give the congressman credit for trying anyway. Well, I guess I better go look up some scalp specials. Oh, hi, Mrs. Uppington. Oh, my, how do you do, Mrs. Uppington? <laughs> oh, delightful spring, girl. Isn't it really? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, do you know that I actually saw a robin this morning? No. Yes, a beautiful robin red bosom. <laughs> <laughs> little robin red bosom. Very good. Oh, Miss McGee, I'm afraid you lack all appreciation for the beautiful springtime, for the birds and the bees and the wildflowers. Oh, if I only knew the language of the flower, so I could bring this tiny green bud high up in the tree. <laughs> I can do that, up there. Oh, how, Miss McGee? Hi, bud. <laughs> oh, Mr. McGee, must you be so cynical, really? Can't you be more poetic? No, I can't, Uppy. I just have bad news. I'm losing my hair. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, my. Oh, yes, you are, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, you poor boy. Yeah, me too. Oh, what do you suppose you the car? Uh, worry, I guess. Well, what are you worried about? About losing my hair. <laughs> I'll see you later, Uppy. i got to look up a scalp special. Oh, well, can't you be more careful, Mr. McGee? Remember, it is free. A free, a free, a free. <laughs> you know, I should like to go out in the early morn and dance among the blue ducks like a beauty little fawn. <laughs> Some fawn, eh, folks? <laughs> oh, I know. You think I'm just being a silly girl. <laughs> it's so nice to see you again, Mr. McGee. Goodbye. <laughs> she cares about me going bald. Springtime. Blah. Oh, John. Huh? Excuse me. But did I hear you say you was getting bald? <laughs> yes, you did, bud. Why? You a scalp specialist? No, I'm a tattoo artist. Now, how about me tattooing a little sentiment on your ball spot? It's kind of an epitaph, kind of. <laughs> You mean hair today and gone tomorrow? <laughs> Something like that there? Yeah. yeah. But then how about, I tried a hundred tonics, but I couldn't save my hair. Now my head is just like heaven, but there's no parting there. <laughs> 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 oh, thanks. <laughs> oh, thanks, bud. I guess not. I may look like a pinhead, but I don't want to be engraved. <laughs> Just an idea, that's all. <laughs> Tonics might not be a bad idea at that. I wonder what's a good one. Huh? Oh, hi, Harpo. Hello there, Fibber. I just... Hey, you're getting bald, aren't you? You think I am? Oh, I sure do. When I walked up behind you just now, I could see you were frowning before you even turned around. <laughs> so. Hey, how do you keep your hair so healthy looking, Harpo? Well, I guess I owe it all to my mother. When I was a little boy, she used to spend whole mornings and afternoons just brushing my hair. Brush, brush, brush. 
right down to the roof. Hmm. Just working her fingers to the bone, eh? Huh? <laughs> How'd she ever have time to do her housework? Grab it, Harpo. <laughs> Why? Why, she has plenty of time for her housework because she used Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. The no-rubbing, no-buffing polish for floors and linoleum that shines as it dries. Hmm. Ain't he wonderful, folks? <laughs> so you owe it all to your mother, eh, Harpo? Yes, I do, sir. But I remember I used to say to her, Say, Mommy. Hey, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Take that lollipop out of your mouth. <laughs> well, I'd say, Say, Mommy, why don't you ever talk about how tired you are? And why don't you have rough, grubby hands like the other little boys' mamas? Smooth <laughs> little tyke, wasn't you? <laughs> And then Mommy would take me on her knees and tell me all about how easy and quick it is to use slow coat. And that's how she always had time to brush my hair. Oh, we were great pals. Well, Mother's best friend is her boy, they tell me. Have you told her she better rush out and grab off some of them money-saving special giant-sized cans before they're all gone? Oh, no, don't worry. She knows all about that. She also knows that you get a pint and a third for the price of a pint. Well, I gotta be going, Tipper. And say, try not to worry too much about that ball. We all knew it would happen. Yes, I knew. Huh? You did? Why, sure. Everybody said you were bound to come out on top. Well, so long, pal. <laughs> oh, here's a scalp specialist right here. Dr. Harry Story. Oh, I'll try him. Hi, sis. Can I see the doctor? Oh, dear me. I don't know why not, Mr. He's five feet eleven. <laughs> Yes, it's her again, folks. Miss Grace is sick. Well, tell the doc. Tell the doc I'd like to see him, will you, sir? You better just sit down a while, Mister. Doctor's busy in his laboratory right now. Oh, he is, eh? What's he working on? Trying to develop a skeleton key for a scalp lock? No, he's experimenting on wiring a toupee for sound. He wants to see if a pilot can move. <laughs> Ma, you're getting pretty bald, aren't you, mister? Yeah, I'm afraid so, sis. I hope the doc can do something about it. Uh, you a registered nurse? Well, I'm a nurse. But dear me, even though there's dozens of men in here every day, I don't seem to have registered yet. <laughs> oh, don't worry, sis. As the Bureau of Identification says to the burglar, someday your prince will come. <laughs> You like nursing? No, yes, I certainly do. I always said if I went into nursing, I'd want to reach the highest place in my profession. And here I am, assistant to a scalp doctor. <laughs> but how come you choose this particular branch of the profession? Oh, you know how it is with a young girl. It's just such such romantic ideas. <laughs> <laughs> you expect to find romance in here? Well, it marries the field, mister. Very few women get bald. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. That's okay. Now, I suspect you won't find no dream man, sis, unless you're looking for one that's thick in the middle and thin on top. Oh, we don't have to be built to specifications, mister. I'll just take one out of stock. <laughs> well, just the same. The guys are liable to meet in this office will no doubt be middle-aged, fat, and gray-haired. Yes, I know. But any man who gets to middle age and is still fat is probably pretty pasty. And if he has gray hair, it's probably cause to worry. And there's only two things men worry about, women and money. And if he has any money and still wants to worry about a woman, well, I guess I know my duty, mister. <laughs> well, you seem to have the situation all right. Oh, uh, hello, doctor. Here's Mr. McGee to see you. Oh, yes, that's fine. Did you take his history nurse? No, but I gave him quite a bit of mine. <laughs> By the way, nurse, I'm a little puzzled about that triangle case. Can't quite diagnose it. He says he wakes up in the morning with dimples all over his scalp. Oh, I can diagnose that, Doc. Tell him to quit using the outdoor sleeping porch during the woodpecker season. <laughs> <laughs> Suffering from alopecia areata yourself. Uh, yeah, who? <laughs> you think you can do something for me, Doc? I ain't hopeless, am I? Uh, not with my sister, my boy. We can grow hair on a football helmet. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, let me see now. I think your case called for Formula 27. It's an old Indian remedy for baldness. Oh, yeah, that's my chief worry. That's what it is. Here we are. Uh, take this tonic home with you, McGee, and these tweezers. Tweezers? What's them for? This tonic is so efficient it grows eyebrows on the bottom. <laughs> so use it very liberally, but only on the scalp, remember. Yeah. One of my patients, a radio actor, filled them in his bathroom the other day with tragic results. Oh, what did he do? Grow a mustache on the wash bowl? No. Then he spilled a few drops in the bathtub, and now I'm afraid he's definitely typed as an actor. Oh. How so come, Doc? Well, you understand, when I say he's now playing the part of a polar bear on a certain Sunday evening program. Oh. Well, well, much obliged, Doc. I'll run right home and apply some of this stuff. This soon is the best. Good day. Uh, good day, Doc. And goodbye to you, sir. I'll see you again when I come back to report on the treatment. Well, I'll be here, mister. Sitting here and dreaming my dreams. About living in a beautiful penthouse with a man I love. Well, and who is the man you love, Chris? Any man who has a beautiful penthouse. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. That was a four-note singing the funny old hill. And that was nice timing, too, kids, because I got back in the house just before you finished. <laughs> Ever notice the construction of this show, folks, how we weave the music through the drama? <laughs> well, that is, he's got. I want to get busy and try this Harry story. Come in. Oh, hello there, Peter. Oh, hi, Nick. Peter, what is this I'm hearing about your hair doing a stiff cheese on your pony, Mom? <laughs> Am I labeling under a misapple dumpling? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right, Nick. I never noticed it myself until everybody started telling me. I thought it was okay, but you know how it is. The parents are deceiving. There is nothing more of a truth than a poetry in that, Peter. It is like little stories I'm reading last night. Uh oh. Well, tell me some other time, Nick. I'm kind of anxious to try this hair time. Well, right? sir, it was being one of the funniest little money goats. And it's a goat. I stand connected. <laughs> one of the cutest little stories I'm ever reading. It's the name of it is being called Freddy Man the Cow. That was the bull. Who cares? I liked it anyway. <laughs> Well, sir, this little Freddy man was a pretty little Spanish boy cow, and there was nothing he would not rather do than something else than sit down and sniffle at a bunch of flowers, such as chrysanthemum, bombs, tiger lulus, garbunias, and nasty shells to support them. <laughs> yes, I know, Dick. He didn't, he didn't run and play like the other little bulls. <laughs> it worried his mother, too, didn't it? Sure. <laughs> Maybe, Dick. But if he wanted to sit and make his nose gay with a flower, it was perfectly okay with her, I'm thinking. Well, sir, one summer's day, there is coming to the farm a bunch of squeegees who are being talent scouts for a bullfight, you grab me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm familiar with the story, Mr. Dunn. And just as they're signing up a couple of the bulls for the World Series bullfight, little Freddy Man is trying to smell a flower and is sitting down on a bumble barn. It's is seeing him right on the conclusion of his story. You mean right on the end of his tail. How did my way, is it? Anyway, he is so painful with his skin that he is acting like a very ferocious push animal. And they are picking him out to try to do it with a famous custard dog. Oreador. <laughs> There's doors, matadors, and chickadors. Sure. Pick the door and walk one run to the nearest stage. I know that. Well, sir, Peter, what is happening on the days of the fight will make your hair stand on his hind feet. <laughs> They're bringing Ferdinand out, and he's standing there sniffing his tail. Sniff, sniff. Well, he refused to fight. He just sat down and smelled the flowers that the women threw into the bull ring. Sure, and everybody is being very disgusted about the whole thing. The party of daughters is pulling his hair, the mighty daughters is wondering what is the matter, and the pick of is picking Ferdinand up and throwing him out on his rump roll. <laughs> but Ferdinand don't care. He's very happy at going home again where he can have his small time sweating the flowers again. And the moment that the story is doing, don't do if somebody is giving you a bum spear. Well, so long, you <laughs> Well, 
Thank oh, goodness not and go to work on this pair of time. It certainly smells terrible. Maybe the theory is to smoke them hidden holes out into the open. <laughs> well, here she goes. Wow. That's strong. You can see it working all right. One more dose now. Ah, now then. Now for a look in the mirror. Oh, so I'll be. What can you imagine? Why not do it? Well, what happened to her? Where'd he go? Give me that telephone. Hello, operator. Oh, is that you, Mert? I haven't got time to sit around today, Mert. Give me that story. Yeah. Fine, doctor. The audience. Oh, hello. Dr. Storer? Yes. Dr. Harry Storer? Yes. What is it, please? <laughs> well, this is Trevor McGee, remember? Oh, yes. Hey, what kind of tonic was that you told me anyway? Why? What happened? Why, I look like I've been scalped. Well, I told you it was an old Indian remedy. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, with us again, but it's for that scalp, Doctor. Hello, I... Susan. Can I have my present now? Your present? What present? You know, that little bottle that you're saying on it's too nice. Oh, that wasn't too nice. That was too 